It's the MasterChef back to win grand finale. So far in the appetizer round, all three finalists have shown they are hungry for the title. Tonight is your last chance to prove that you deserve the grand prize. Let's go, let's go. It's stunning. It's got that glamour. It looks like something that I would serve at a table in a restaurant. Christian, I think this dish screams you. The magic is in the breading. It's classy. Delicious stuff. Young lady, tough starts. Um, you got frazzled, but fishy cooked beef for you. And it's delicious. Thank you. And the entree round kicked off with a very special guest judge. Graham Elliott! Yes! Everyone's really playing it risky. The level is sky high. Absolutely. Let's go, guys. You got this. Let's go, baby. Let's go. This is going to be down to the final minute. Tonight, the back to win finale continues. It's the finale now. Everything you've done so far in this competition, you're not blowing it now. Less than five minutes and Dara's short ribs are still in the pot. We are judging you on what you serve. Big deep breath, compose yourself. And with another guest judge to impress, give a big warm welcome. Christina Tozzi! It's a fierce fight to the finish line. This dessert is a triumph. You're pushing the boundaries. You're testing our palates. It's clear that you know great flavor. It's a gorgeous dessert. America's next master chef is <laughs> 10 minutes to go. <laughs> this entree round is going to be so down to the final minute. Everyone's really playing it risky. Michael's doing this chili rub loin of lamb. With it, he's doing a double corn, a corn fritter and a corn cream, which could be interesting with lamb. Oh my gosh. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Uh, Michael's way behind. He's behind, and he's I mean, it literally behind. looks like he's making five dishes. I'm concerned that Michael's ambition might take him down today. I work clean, I look clean, my plate will be clean. The Jeopardy for Dara, when she serves me that short rib, and I can put my fingers in it and squeeze it apart, yeah. it'll be perfect. Uh, yeah. This is going to be make or break. When that lid comes off, it could go either way. Yeah. Yeah. Keep pushing. Christian's now starting to sear his beef. Some of that size, some of that size. They're not all the same size. Well, that's a major yeah. point of jeopardy. Four fillets, medium rare. There's nowhere for him to hide. Oh, boy. I don't have time for this. What is Michael doing? Do they set hard enough? Oh, this is not how it's ever been before. No. Oh, my God. Look at me, OK? And what you do now is creating a mess. You slow down. Everything you've done so far in this competition, you're not blowing it now. Composure. OK. OK, if it's not yes, good, sir. you don't serve it, because we are judging you on what you serve. Big, deep breath, compose yourself. OK. Wow. Five minutes to go. Come on, guys. Emily, right now, who's in jeopardy? It's less than five minutes, and Dara's short ribs are still in the pot. So I am, uh, like, having a heart attack for her right now. Yep. Michael's grit cakes have gone all soft and nowhere near crispy like he said they would be. What should he be doing? I mean, you don't want to start over, so maybe crisp them up in a pan or something. Uh -huh. and how's Christian looking? I mean, he's really taking that time with his plating, so the stakes are resting. Hopefully he can, uh, you know, pull it through in these last four minutes. Amazing. Amazing. Come on, come on. Dara, you're doing great. Take a deep breath. <sighs> I'm nervous about your short ribs, Dara. 90 seconds to go. Come on. Yeah, it's time for her to open that thing. Open that thing up, yep. Dara. Dara, open it up. Here Here it comes. Comes. Open it up. Open up. Carefully. Careful. Be careful. Oh! Those are beautiful. Those look amazing. They look beautiful. Keep it going, girl. Taste everything, you guys. You got this. Michael, that's cooked perfectly. Oh, I'm shaking. Okay, Dar, you gotta get on the plate. All right, come on. Get it on the plate. Yeah, girl, you gotta eat on that plate. 30 seconds! Now the sauce. Oh, my God. Two, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, again. 
What an incredible entree round. Please make your way around to the front. Uh, Michael, let's start with you, please. Bring your entrees down. Thank you. After the appetizer round, I felt like I was smack dab in the center of this competition. <laughs> but with the entree round, I'm getting concerned that I bit off more than I can chew. But I believe in pushing myself to my limit, and that's what I did tonight. Right, please describe your dish. This is a chili rubbed loin of lamb with a roasted poblano grit cake, corn puree, and birria jus. You literally worked your ass off there across those last 60 minutes, and you look at the final product, it looks good. The dish looks really tasty, and the colors are vibrant. Unfortunately, with the cook on the lamb, it looks like it wasn't evenly seared all the way around. Shall we? Is that the consistency you're looking for in the sauce? I did want it thick. I wanted it to be able to kind of soak up the hardiness. Wow. Uh, Michael. The crispy corn cake needs to be a little bit more crispy, as you know. That's not delivering what it should in terms of the texture. Uh, but I love the corn puree. It's delicious. Mushrooms, beautiful. But the lamb is slightly overcooked. Perfect. And I like all the components. There's a lot going on. But I think that cooking of the lamb is more going towards medium than medium rare. I like the way that you embrace some of those Mesoamerican ingredients with the corn puree and the mushrooms. It just makes sense. The overall flavor is something that's pleasant. OK, thank you, Chef. I think the flavors are all there. You've got the poblanos that are in the grit cake, which provide a lot of that earthy flavor, too. So it's a flavor bomb, really delicious. And I think you did a, a good job. Thank you, Michael. Take your head off. I actually enjoyed the corn cake more than the lamb. I thought yeah, it was quite good. It was nice, yeah. Dara, please bring your dish forward. A few different things went wrong in my appetizer round, but I feel really good about my entree. I was definitely calmer, cleaner. That definitely is reflected in my plates. Dara, please describe what you've made. For my entree, I made Chinese-style short ribs with a whipped Japanese sweet potato, spiced carrots, caramelized pearl onions with a carrot top remoulade. Uh, visually, uh, young lady, it looks beautiful. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, aesthetically very interesting. I love this kind of decorative wreath effect. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to do the pinch test. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. At Dara, you took a big risk in that pressure cooker. Um, and young lady, it paid off. It's delicious. <laughs> that dark, rich, sticky, beautiful short rib with that light, fluffy mash. You're 20 years of age, but it tastes like there's 20 years of cooking in here. And I think that's the exciting thing for me. It's spicy. It's intriguingly reduced and rich. It's just really thought-provoking food. Well done. Thank you, sir. If anything, it is that the sauce is a little overreduced, so it's almost on the verge of saltiness. Luckily, the sweet potato and the carrot add that sweetness to kind of balance. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, um, look. I would serve this in my restaurant. I would eat it at his restaurant. I would eat it at his restaurant. And I would eat it at his restaurant. Great job. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah, it's very good. Very good indeed. OK, Christian, please bring us down your dish. I feel like this is the best plating I've ever done throughout this competition. I'm just hoping and praying that these steaks are cooked right. OK, Christian, please describe the dish to us. Tonight I prepared for you a Cajun rub filet mignon with a shrimp and crab cake with sauteed turnip greens, parsnip puree, and a tomato Cajun cream sauce. 
Uh, Christian, visually it looks beautiful. The fillet looks like it's sat in an unctuous pool of absolute, wonderful puree. Thank you, chef. Question is, you got four fillets here. A lot of variation because they're different in size as well. You, you're telling us that they're all medium rare. I feel that they are all medium rare, so. Let's find out. You've got four fillets here, a lot of variation because they're different in size as well. You're telling us that they're all medium rare. I feel that they are all medium rare, so. Let's find out. All right. It's perfect medium rare. Yes. Mine is beautifully done. Little under. Mm. One left. It's a little under. Christian, I think you took a really bold move because we've got four different sized fillets, and mine's cooked beautifully, but. Two of the steaks are medium rare, and two are rare, so there's a technical problem. But flavor-wise, it's absolutely delicious. Thank you, sir. I love the puree. It's just silky smooth and very creamy. Thank you, chef. Uh, for me, it's a little underdone, which is a disappointment, but overall, the choices that you made here resulted in big, beautiful flavor. Thank you, chef. Thank you, chef. I love that the sweetness that comes with the glazed turnip pairs so well with the crab, which is gorgeous and golden. You added just enough finding to hold it together. Christian, you kind of created a bit of an existential crisis for me because I really like this dish. But if these four dishes were dropped in my restaurant tonight, two of them were going back to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Too bad. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good point. But the flavors, I mean, are delicious. Yeah. Happy? Let's do it. Wow. Well done. Michael, Dara, Christian. Two rounds down, one to go. This is it. OK, guys, we all know that desserts are notoriously difficult to execute and master. But pull them off right tonight, and you will leave a lasting and sweet impression. And just so we know, you're putting forth your best dishes. We have yet another special guest joining us this evening. Not only is she one of the most prominent pastry chefs on the planet, she's also beloved family of the MasterChef team. Oh, my goodness. Give a big warm welcome to the Milk Bar Maven, Christina Tozzi. <laughs> like rainbows and butterflies. <laughs> she is the dessert queen, and to know that she's gonna be tasting my dessert tonight is exciting. She is MasterChef legendary. Thank you so much for coming back here tonight. It feels like a homecoming. Please welcome Christina Tozzi. Christina is truly one of the most revered pastry chefs anywhere in the world. Derek. It's gorgeous. The bright red from the raspberry sauce and just that paper-thin layer of tempered chocolate. Really nice decision that Sunak on seasoning really brings out both the potatoes and the lamb. Shane the Train, that ribeye steak is cooked beautifully. It's got a kick. Brandy, this dessert is stunning. Incredibly proud of you. Dream big, everyone. You never know where your food dreams might take you. Shane, have you missed Christina? It's safe to say I've missed you very much, Christina. Dude. I'm a grown man now. A lot has changed. What, are you asking on a date or what? <laughs> Can you behave yourself, please? <laughs> 
Dar, your face lit up. Are you nervous? <laughs> a little bit more now. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an inspiration to me, so being able to cook for you tonight is going to be incredible. Amazing. Thanks. How important is that level of perfection across the dessert tonight? I mean, you remember the highlight of your meal, and you remember the tail end of your meal. That dessert is crucial. And in this competition, we've seen things change. As far as I'm concerned, it's for any of you three to take. Absolutely. Graham, you've got a bird's eye view from up in the balcony. The safety arms of Big Willie is waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Graham. Do it. All right, thank you guys. We'll catch up with you a bit later. This is it, everybody. Your desserts. Michael, we'll start with you. Today I'm going to be making deep fried milk mm. with a mango ice cream and a cajeta goat's milk dulce de leche with tropical fruit salsa. Wow. Mm. Dara? For dessert, I will be making a vanilla el sotante. So that's a floating island? A floating island, yes. Which is like a pavlova, the crispy meringue, the marshmallowy center, with a passion fruit creme anglaise, tropical fruit, and a caramelized forbidden rice. Mm. Uh, Christian, please. Tonight I'll be preparing for you Dorothy Southern banana pudding, topped with salted pecan and a lemon cookie. Wow. So who is Dorothy? Dorothy is my late grandmother. I'm gonna go ahead and elevate this dessert, and it's gonna pop. They all sound wow. delicious. <laughs> the final dish. That's all that remains before we crown our back to win Master Chef champion. Are you all ready? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Give it all you've got. Your 60 minutes start now. Let's go. Oh my god. Let's go. I'm going into the dessert round with a lot of confidence, but I do feel a little extra pressure because everyone knows that pastry desserts are my thing. Okay. Well done. Let's go, Michael. Let's go. Good. Well done, Christian, let's go. I'm nervous because this last cook means so much to me. You know, it's a tribute to my grandmother. My focus right now is to finish strong and to make my family proud. Here we go again. Going into the dessert round, like, I know my entree wasn't the best, which puts me in a very precarious situation. You got it, Mike. <sighs> this dessert is ultimately the deciding factor in who wins this season of MasterChef. Oh, my God. This is it. Um, for me, the desserts, you know, is one of the most important ones. And the dishes need to be at the level that we would serve at any yes. of our restaurants. Yep. Yeah. So that's the gauntlet. We have great themes to the menus. So sure. Michael's is modern Tex-Mex, Dara, Asian influences of my childhood. And uh, Christian is celebrating New Orleans and the cuisine of the Deep South. Whip like a queen. Oh, yeah. Come on. There we go. <sighs> 15 minutes gone. 45 minutes to go. Come on, guys. Looking good, Mike. Right, young man, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I got to get this into the freezer as soon as humanly possible. So, Michael, give me a little insight. What's in this pot? This is my uh, coconut milk cornstarch uh, slurry that's going to be formed into these fried So milk it's a balls. coconut fried milk. That's right. Yeah. Why coconut? Oh, I just love the tropical flavors. There's going to be a lot of tropical fruit with this. And it's just going to be special. It's going to be something that's never been done before. Tex-Mex, tropical fruit. Yeah. This is not a tres leches cake, but it is my complete version of tres leches. So I've got goat's milk, coconut milk, and cream with my own homemade mango ice Your cream. Your milk. My free milk. But the star of the dessert is what? The fried milk and that ice cream. Wait, the fried milk or the... You can't have two stars. I really want this ice cream to shine. It's my favorite part of the dish. How are you going to plate this thing? I'm going to plate it very contemporary, as I tend to do. It's going to look like art on a plate. Uh-huh. Young man, the very best of luck. Thank you both so much. Christian, my main man, what's going on? Talk to me about your dish. So I'm making my grandmother's traditional banana pudding. Okay, banana pudding might seem pretty straightforward, okay. but you're gonna elevate it. Yeah, my grandmother and my uncle was very close, yes. and uh, he used to eat a lot of lemon cookies. Okay. And it used to be my favorite cookie, so I just decided to add a little lemon zest to my wafer. 
Ah. Yes. Ah. And then also, I'm gonna salt some pecans. My grandmother used to grow pecans on her land, so it's straight home, you know? Yeah. I'm putting them in some nice glasses, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of layers of flavor, brother. I love it. This banana pudding has a lot writing on it. It does. I have to make my mom proud, because this is what she does. Do us mom, proud. Mom, how do you think he's doing? He's doing good. Handle your business, all right, brother? Thank you, chef. All right, thank you. Keep it up, baby, keep it up. Take a deep breath, Dora. Where are you going? Where are you going? All right, Dara. Well, let's talk about the floating island. Yes, with a passion fruit creme anglaise, some tropical fruit, and a caramelized crispy rice. So, a reinterpretation of a pavlova. Essentially. Tell me about the forbidden rice. How do you yeah. do that? And I just deep fried it at 400 degrees. Uh -huh. It's going to mimic almost like a rice crispy treat. So, this whole menu is a journey into your childhood. Yeah. This dessert really represents my past and my present. So, I had a pavlova at my first birthday. The present is one of the most influential chef instructors I had showed me this dessert. I have grown so much as a person and as a culinarian, and I feel like I've been able to show you guys that. Totally. And today's just a new start as an adult in this industry, so. So these, at the end of the day, have to be light, crispy, and chewy? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Can't wait. Thanks, Dara. Thank you. We are coming down to the last 20 minutes. Come on, guys. So, what is Michael doing now? He's making his ice cream with liquid nitrogen. When you make ice cream like this, if you pour too much, if you go too fast, you're freezing it quickly, you're crystallizing the ice cream, making yeah. it less smooth. Sure. He seems to put a lot of liquid nitrogen yeah, in there. Yeah, a lot. Mad scientist! He's going back. Oh, God, he's going for more. He's going for more. No, no, no. <gasps> what is he doing? Michael is taking that blowtorch. He's using it to warm up the pieces of mango ice cream that has frozen up the walls of his mixing bowl to make oh, one no. continuous but ice cream mixture. But here he goes again. Michael seems to just be adding liquid nitrogen with reckless abandon. That's not a great recipe for a great dessert. No, nope. just be adding liquid nitrogen with reckless abandon. That's not a great recipe for a great dessert. No. Nope. <sighs> okay, here you go. Oh my goodness, it's chunky. Look? Wow. We're about to caramelize them bananas. Christian right now is conjuring up the memory of his beloved grandmother who sadly recently passed. He's gonna make banana pudding. I have to say, you don't often see pudding as the star no. of a three course it Seems meal. a little too simple for me, I yeah. don't know. Let's go, baby. So Dara's presented a floating island meringue, but she's really delivering a deconstructed pavlova. A pavlova is essentially a large meringue with a passion fruit curd, and then you surround with fresh fruit. Right. I think that Dara's trying to make this a final send-off. Exactly. Yeah. As always with Dara, she's a great technician. Yes, but her plating skills are phenomenal. But the thing about a floating island is, it's egg whites and sugar, maybe vanilla? I'm hoping it's not too sweet. Dang, Michael, look at you with the pink pineapple. Caramel fig oh, cheesecake. beautiful. So Michael's got a lot going on in dessert, right? He sure does. He's doing that fried milk that needs to be sort of like warm and oozy and gooey, and he's yes. playing that off of the sharp coldness of a mango ice cream. I just hope he hasn't taken a bunch of different elements and pray that they work together. Sure. You know? It sounds a little bit like that. Thought that was hot. Come on. Five minutes remaining. Yeah. Come on, guys. Woo! Graham. Bird's eye view from the top. How's it looking from up there? It's looking great. Everyone's clearly in their element. You have Christian plating. You have Dara looking calm, composed. And then Michael, <laughs> kind of a recreation of the entree. Running around, I'm, I'm getting nervous. Yes. But again, pulling it off, fried milk. Amazing. Look at Michael's station compared to Dara's station right now. It's clear who's in control and who is a flutter. He is sweating out there. That's when you try to do too much. Go, Michael, go! Go, Christian! Don't forget your pecans. 60 seconds to go! Last minute, come on, guys! Look at that. Michael's ice cream looks delicious. Oh my gosh, she's removing them. There you go. Look They're at beautiful. That. They are beautiful. Wow. Michael! Oh my god. I don't have enough fried milk. Come on, Mike. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Remember, this is for your grandmother. 20 seconds. Come on, Dora. Come on, Dora. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well 
done. Oh, my God. I've been saying from the beginning, I came here to prove to myself, my family, the judges, how much I've grown. And I'm feeling extremely proud of myself. These are happy tears now. <laughs> I made it the most important day of my life. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but uh, I'm still standing. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling content. At this point, this can go either way, because these are amazing chefs. They put out some amazing desserts. It's an honor to be back here, you know, and I feel like I made my family proud, you know, because I wanted to stay true to myself, and staying true to myself got me this far, so I'm very proud of myself. This is it, everyone. The dish that will seal somebody's fate as the champion of season 12. Master back to win. Please make your way around to the front. <laughs> Dara, can you please bring your dessert forward? <laughs> What's she gonna do with those meringues? Feeling really confident with this dessert because it combines textures and a ton of traditional French techniques but also I'm dipping my meringue domes in nitrogen to create this beautiful crust of crispy meringue as well as that pillowy inside. She's basting with liquid nitrogen. Oh, wow. I'm extremely proud of this dessert. I think it's gonna be the perfect end to my whole menu, and I feel like it could get me that win. Dark, please describe your dessert. I prepared a vanilla il flotante with a passion fruit creme anglaise, tropical fruit, and a caramelized forbidden rice. Mm. That vision looks beautiful. I just love the colors. Smart choice in the plateware. I just think it's well thought out. You smash the top. Yes, please, smash the top. Uh -huh. Mine's not smashing. Is it supposed to crack? Got hard, crash. Yeah. Harder? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I love a dessert that looks like something I know and I've tasted before, but is full of surprises. I like that you brought big flavor to the table, and it's clear that you thought about texture. It's a gorgeous dessert. Dara, it's got that wow factor. It's a little too sweet, but I love the creme anglaise. Uh, it's compressing the fruit. It's refreshing. This is a very well-seasoned dessert. I don't think people talk about seasoning with dessert enough. I think when you have that passion fruit, those seeds give you a pepperness to it that I think is very pleasant. Thank well you. done. Thank you, Chef. Garo, I love the use of the um, savory herbs or greens. What did you put in Micro here? Micro cilantro. Really smart because it gives complexity to the fruit. The forbidden rice, it's a good textural contrast. Very good. Thank you. I like the passion fruit in that creme anglaise. Great. It's a really Beautiful. thoughtful dessert. Yeah. Oh, my God. Michael, please step forward with your dessert. Yes, chef. I am feeling a sense of relief that it's over, that whatever happens next is out of my hands. I can only hope that I've done enough to take home the trophy today. Please describe your dessert. Tonight I've made for you a play on tres leches. It's a homemade mango ice cream with deep fried milk, salted cajeta, goat's milk, caramel, and a tropical fruit salsa. Visually, uh, Michael, it's intriguing. The colors are great, and it's the kind of dessert that whizzes across the dining room floor, and it's a bit of an eye catcher. What do you think is wrong with my plate, Michael? Yeah, you are missing one of your fried milk squares. Did he, like, run out, or did he forget? And you chose to short a wrong. Um. What do you think is wrong with my plate, Michael? Yeah, you are missing one of your fried milk squares. And you chose to short a wrong. Um, I, I was hoping that Aroma would be the most forgiving. Oh. Oh. Here's the secret. Just take one off everyone's plate, and then no one's missed anything. Yeah. Shall we? All right, Michael, the, the ice cream is delicious, young man. 
It's smooth, it's beautiful. I think your fried milk could be a little less dense, but you're pushing the boundaries. You're testing our palates. Michael, I think conceptually it's a beautiful dessert. You clearly have an eye for putting food on a plate. Mango ice cream is the star. I think your goat's milk caramel is really interesting. It's edgy. It's clear that you know great flavor. It's clear that you have a point of view and perspective. Thank you. I really appreciate that feedback. Yeah, Michael, when I have the ice cream, the crumble, and the tropical food salsa, it's a beautiful bite. But I think that the cajeta caramel is some completely different concept. It's hard to marry cajeta with tropical fruit. It's just difficult to do. And also, I'm short. One of those fried milk portions and consistency is such a big part of our industry. And um, just got to be very mindful of that, Michael. Yeah. Michael, I want to compliment you on this dessert because we asked you to cook us dishes that we would serve in our restaurant. I think you did that. This dessert is a triumph. Thank you all. Okay, Christian, please come forward. I put so much passion, so much love into this dessert. I just hope that the judges see that because this dessert is standing between me and a quarter million dollars. Okay, Christian, what do you make for us? Tonight I made for you Dorothy Southern Banana Pudding with a bourbon caramel sauce topped with salted pecans and a lemon cookie. Christian, I think the fascinating thing about your plating tonight, uh, looking across all three courses, is that you're holding on to the heritage, and it's clearly for a reason. You know, my grandmother is not here to witness me on this stage, but um, I just wanted to give her a tribute. And if Grandma Dorothy was sat next to Mum, what would she say right now? The same thing that she's been saying when I left season five, that I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Shall we? Um, young man, you know, one thing is clearly evident. Your banana pudding is delicious. It's not too sweet, which is important. But when you look at the elevation of the two dishes behind you, you know, it's like this is from a unique buffet off a floating super yacht. You just call it the view. But I think you could have elevated it a touch more coming outside the glass and getting away from that comfort zone. Yes, sir. So, Christian, I have this rule. Always start with a flavor story that you believe in with all of your might. And you have that in this banana pudding. It's grandma's, but I don't know that I know enough about you, Christian, in this dish. But with that said, I mean, good dessert's good dessert. And <laughs> this is a really delicious dessert. It's complex, at the same time, very simplistic. It's straightforward, it's honest, it's just like you. The yes, chef, thank you. Christian, there's a bit of missed opportunities in this dish. You could caramelize the bananas in a little bit of butter and brandy. So there's things you could do to make it better, but look, I have to commend you on being true to yourself in everything you do. You brought your grandmother's dessert to the table. It's a beautiful thing. Good job. Thank you. It's a delicious banana pudding. We all had some goods and bads. Yeah, it's Let's gonna be go, honest. It's gonna come down to the smallest details. It was an extraordinary finish. All three of you should be really proud of yourselves, honestly. And now that we've tasted all of your dishes, we need to judge you across your entire meal. Graham, please come down here to join us in the restaurant. Right now, we have got some very serious decisions to be made. Please give us a moment. Okay, that was really incredible. So, now down to the balance of the overall menu. Yeah. 
Shall we start with Michael? He wanted to go for a modern Tex-Mex approach with his menu. He went out the gate with this spicy aguachile, and it was acidic and spicy what an aguachile should be. Visually, it had that impact. It needed more it salt, didn't it? It did, it did. But definitely restaurant quality. Sure. With Michael, I'm more critical of his entree. He really didn't pay enough attention to that lamb loin. The unfortunate thing is that lamb being so delicate, it was overseared and it was over, over, and it was over yeah. No Cold puree that was exceptional. Yes. Come on. But I don't know about that dessert. It was just a disconnect for me. There were parts about Michael's dessert that I really loved. I thought visually it was stunning, it held gravitas for the MasterChef kitchen, which I highly respected. I have to commend him because he didn't play it safe. He didn't. He was the one who went out there the most. So Dara, she started off with that crispy seared snapper. It was good. It was good. Fish cooked beautifully. Then for the entree, it was that amazing braised short rib and then this beautiful sweet potato puree. It was delicious. If we had that tonight in a restaurant, we all would leave and be like, that, yeah. that short rib was great, huh? Absolutely. Dara's dessert, a very dense, sweet meringue. But everything else around it was acidic, was bright. That meringue, well, I think it's something that's memorable. Her instinct from a flavor standpoint, I think is the most impressive of the three. I totally agree with that. So Christian came out the gate strong with that fried green tomato, the remoulade. The flavor profile was deep down south, and he was absolutely spot on. It was good. Then his entree was that Cajun spice filet. Unfortunately, half the filets were cooked at different temperatures, but it was delicious. And he took just as much care in the turnips as he did with the main star, which was that filet. The flavors were awesome. That dessert at the end was a classic take on his grandma Dorothy's pudding. He was so stuck on the emotion of it, and a great dessert is emotional, but it was Christian's grandma's banana pudding, not Christian's banana pudding. The biggest ingredient missing across his dessert was the risk factor. I agree 100%. But his currency is not risk. His currency is honesty. Sure. Proud of you guys. Proud of you guys. Proud of you. There can only be one winner of Master back to win. So how do we decide between the three of them? My heart is beating out of my chest right now. Pounding. Winning Master Chef will mean the world to me. I feel that I gave everything throughout this whole competition. I came back to prove myself and not just come back and be in the finale. I came back to win. It's a difficult decision, but it's the right decision. Shall we? We happy? Got it. Let's do it. Wow. MasterChef trophy, and I want it. I'm young, but wise beyond my years. And I feel like I've proven time after time that I deserve this win. Well done. You three showed us week after week that you had the fire and the spirit that brought you back to win. This has been the most competitive year in the history of this competition. Only one of you will win the quarter of a million dollars. And only one of you will be able to proudly place this trophy in your future restaurant. The truth is, I gave this finale everything that I have. Nothing has pushed me to these extremes before, but I never gave up in the kitchen and I never gave up on myself. And that's why I'm gonna win it. Will it be Michael? Dara or Christian. America's next master chef is congratulations. Dara.
this has been the most incredible journey of my life and all my hard work and determination paid off. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be surrounded by my loved ones. My father isn't here, but I know that he's been looking over me this whole competition, and I know I made him proud tonight. Yes. Yeah. That photo looks pretty good up there. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Christian and Michael, please. Yeah. Daryl's unbelievable at any age. But at 20 years old, it's ridiculous. So proud of you, Bella. She deserves this, and I had a blast cooking beside her. Don't you dare stop now. Do you have any idea what you achieved tonight? Yeah. You know, even though I, I didn't win tonight, I still feel like a winner. You know, to come back to MasterChef the second time, and then just to come so close to winning, I can't be upset at myself. <laughs> that was a blast. 12 years old the last time I was on the show, and now I am the season 12 MasterChef winner. I came back to win, and that's exactly what I did. Woo! We are looking for talented home cooks nationwide. If you think you have what it takes to become, just like Dara, America's next MasterChef, then please apply now to masterchefcasting.com. Good night, and God bless. Amazing. Potato, do potato.